The syntax we looked at previously for creating arrays is great for making little arrays, but it's not going to work so well when we want to create big ones. The cons operator allows us to build bigger lists, but writing recursive functions to build them is a bit more verbose than what we might want. For this reason, you can build either arrays or lists using the fill method. So, how does fill work? Well, the syntax, we'll start with an array, is it is a method on the array object, and so we call array.fill. And fill uses some syntax elements that we haven't seen before. And we'll have to mention these at least briefly. We'll go into more detail about them later. It actually takes two argument lists, the first of which tells you the length of the array or list, if we had replaced the word array with list, it would also work with list, that we want to build. So for example, if I want an array with 10 elements in it, I can say array.fill 10, and note I closed off the argument list, and then I open a new argument list. This is doing something called currying, where you can give your functions multiple separate argument list. So here we specify the value that we want inside of our array. And this is also using something new, though it doesn't look like it here. This method creates an array with 10 values, each of which is 5. So we have an array of ints. Now the second argument is actually passed by value. Okay, and to understand this, uh, what this means, we kind of actually need to do something different than just passing in a constant. A good demonstration of how this matters is instead of creating an array of ints, we'll create an array of doubles, and we'll pass in the function math.random. Now, just calling math.random gives you a random number and every time you call it you get a different random number and you can see here that we got 10 different random numbers that happens because this is passed in by value to make it more clear let's go and look at our list functions we have an input list here how about we write a fill list? Def fill list. And we're going to pass it in elements. And then we're going to pass a value. And in this case, because we are working with doubles for our random, we'll stick to that. If n is less than 1, we'll give back nil, else we will give back the value v const on to fill list of n minus 1. So we can load in that file. Nope, not enough arguments, that's right, we need a v there. So we load that in. Am I missing a parentheses? Same parentheses that I had uh, <coughs> done previously. Okay. Load that in it's actually down here waiting for me to type in five values one two three four five okay so LST here is a list with one two three four five we could also say fill list and much like what we did with the array.fill I'm going to pass it 10 and math.random but note that what happens here, because these things are not passed by name, is that we get 10 values that are all the same, which generally isn't so useful for a list because the list isn't mutable. So once we've created it, we can't change it. Whereas if I do a list.fill 
and I make 10 values of math.random. I get them as separate. And this is because when something is passed by name, it's not actually evaluated until it's needed. And then it is evaluated over and over again every time that it is used. So we get different random values each time. We can also demonstrate this by making a var. So I'll start off i at 0. And then I'm going to make an array, calling array.fill. Once again, I'll make 10 elements. Of course, the nice thing about fill is I could very easily make more. It's just it won't print out so nicely for the video. And then the expression that I'm going to use is actually going to have two things inside of it. One is I want to take our variable i, and I want to increment it by 1. So it had been 0. The first time this happens, it'll be 1. If it happens the second time, it'll be 2, etc. And then I want to give back the value of i. And you can see from the result here that i is getting bigger. So this code doesn't just happen once. It actually happens 10 times. And so our i value went from 0 to 10. So that is the power of the fill method is that whatever you pass in here is actually being evaluated however many times you do this. We can also see that an easy way to make an array that is full of user inputs is to say array.fill and since I don't feel like typing that much I'm going to say 5 and read int and then I can type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and I get an array with those values. So array gives us a nice way to, in with a short syntax, make arrays and lists that are larger, however big we want. And I didn't really demonstrate it, but let's go ahead and let's make something that is significantly larger. There's We just created an array with 10,000 elements, all of which are zero. And, and using this syntax, it's a, it's a very easy thing for us to do. So when you want to build big arrays, uh, you'll pr almost certainly use fill or the method we'll talk about next, tabulate. Uh, for lists, it's a good chance that fill will be helpful to you, though the recursive methods to build large lists using cons is also useful.